welcome to a new episode of our hot codes this is episode five as you can see by my pretty new designs here i uh, worked with a designer to get all that set up so looks pretty cool if i say so myself uh, i'm a little biased but i like it anyway so a few, few things um from now on it'll ha i'll have these like nice little overlays and maybe eventually i'll have some cool stuff to interact with people in the chat um, things like that and yeah so today is going to be a little bit of a different stream so i'm going to do the advent of code challenge and we're doing it with language i've never used before or i have used before i used it yesterday just to learn some of the syntax but that's it we're using golang uh or go i'm not sure like what what it's supposed to be all i know is that there's a gopher I think it's a gopher. I think that's what it is. And it's like amazing, amazing logo. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and link or show you like the advent of code uh, thing over here. So I have the Go documentation up because I'm definitely going to need to refer to it in a little bit. So advent of code 2019. I'm a day behind. Um, I haven't. I'm going to start with one. Two is already out. It's already the second day. Um, I'm probably not going to stream every single one of these because I only stream on Monday. There's that. But um, I might I'll probably do uh, day one today, even though it's actually day two. And next week, we'll see if we do another day. Cool. So kind of not going to read through all this. You can read through it if you want to. I've already read through it, kind of understood it. Um, but basically, we're going to it's going to give you a puzzle input, right? All these numbers. So what we have to do um, is get this like fuel mass thing um, because Santa has become stuck at the edge of the solar system for whatever reason. I guess he's delivering presents to the entire universe now. Um, our function, what it, well, I already said it's a function, but yeah, uh, what we need to do is make some type of code that takes the mass of the stars, divides it by three, and then subtracts it by two. And we like add all of those together. Each of the stars, I guess, are going to give him some type of fuel. Um, and yeah, so we just have to, these are the masses of the stars that we've been given that's a lot and essentially what we need to do like i said for each of these things divide by uh but divide by three subtract two add them all together and that is the total amount of fuel that he needs uh to get to wherever he needs to get to maybe he needs to get back to earth does he need to get back to earth yeah he needs to return to earth all right to save christmas So let's go ahead and make make there a uh, folder for advent code day one. CD into that. I cannot spell. And we're gonna create a main dot go. For those of you who do not know why I did all of that. Um, so this is my understanding of it. If you're like a Go person and you want to rip me to shreds for like explaining this poorly, please let me know. But from my understanding, this main.go is like the main uh, main uh, thing that gets run when you run your Go code. So this is like an executable um top level i guess file that needs to be run and what we're gonna do is a little bit of like i guess boilerplate stuff to get started so we have to at the top right package main um so package main basically signifies i think that this is like the top level um executable code um now we can like import stuff 
So there's a couple, two things I'm going to import. I'm going to import FMT, which is like, to, if you're like a JavaScript person, this is going to help do like console logs and things like that. And we're also going to import math because we need math to solve this problem, which makes sense. But I still have this red squiggly. Okay, let me create the main function. So when you do this package main, you also need this like func main, like a main function, I guess. And just, I don't know, um, fmt dot print ln print line just hello just uh, just make sure that I know how to write some co code. Okay, save that. Okay, the formatting stuff is gone. Amazing. So I'm just gonna open a terminal over here. Come on. Okay, so. Ooh, why is this? Well, what's going on here? Imported in all, I didn't use it. Okay, well, it's still run. Go. I think it's go run main.go. I think that's how you do it. Oh, it's still okay. So I can take this out until I actually use it. In that case, let's just import format or FT. Okay. Now let's run that again. Wonderful. We, we just figured out how to program in Go. This is amazing. I can be a Go programmer now. Um, or not really. <laughs> All right, let's go back to importing FM math. To be honest, I don't know if I actually need math. I'm, I'm sure I do. I don't know. So I, I fully have no idea. Um, this is really for fun to try out. Let's see. All right, so we're going to math, and let's do something more useful than uh, printing hello world. All right, so what we need to do is all right. So we get a mass of twelve. We need to divide that by three, round down to get four, and then subtract two to get two. And then if we do mass of 14 divided by three, rounding down still yields four. Because, okay, we're still rounding down and then the field required is also two. Okay, so whatever we get, we always have to round down, I guess. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Let's look at the math uh, package. Let's see. Packages. Well, what does math give us? Ooh. Find math. Okay. Uh -huh. They're like a rounding type thing. Round here, round here we go. Mathematical constants. Oh, they have like constant stuff, just like in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably doesn't work the same way. <laughs> okay, how do we do like a? Round, um, rounding numbers go. Round math dot round. Okay, we can try that. So let's try that. 
Um, so the main function, we just Let's just take one of these examples. So mass of 12. So if we just do, uh, let's see, var mass, and I think it's supposed to be, what's the type for numbers? Types. I mean, I'm pretty sure I type types, so well, what else would I mean? Oh, there's different types of ints and numbers. Like what are, what is, what is all this for? I'm coming from JavaScript where you can just write in a number and it just works. Okay. So if you are familiar with JavaScript or like a, dynamically type language like JavaScript, Python, things like that. You don't have to like declare the type of what your variable needs to be. Um, in our case, we're using Go statically typed. We need to actually declare that this thing needs to be like a number or something. I uh, guess we can you try int and see what happens. So var mass is going to be an int. Okay. And we'll say that's 12. All right. So what we want to do is let's say return mass. Order of operations mass divided by three minus two. Right, that's uh, challenger divided by three, which goes down to four, then subtract two to get two. So we should expect the output of this thing to be two. Hmm. Rather than just return it, let's um, say result var result, also an int equals mass divided by three minus two, and we will format our fmt dot print line or console log uh, the result. Okay. See it see that gives us two. Okay, so that gives us two. But is it always going to round down is my question. Let's see. So the case with 12 worked uh, for a mass of 14. We should still get to. So let's try 14. I highly doubt this is going to work, but let's just see like what we get back. Oh, we still got to. I guess it maybe when you're specifying an int, it always rounds down. Hmm. Okay, let's try 1969. Is it really going to be this easy? I feel like there's still something wrong here. But let's give this a shot. 654. Is that what it's supposed to be? It is 654. Okay. If this test case works, then we can move on to actually solving our thing. This is like <laughs> the most manual way of testing this. Okay, three, three, five, eight, three. Okay, so I guess there's nothing special that you need to do with math to uh, get it to round down. It just looks like if you specify that the type needs to be an int, it will do it for you. Um, at least all of the test cases seem to work this way. So it looks like we're fine on that end. All right. So now they gave us all these numbers, right? All these numbers. So can we just pop these into? So what I would do in JavaScript, I guess, is like pop this into an array, 
iterate over the array and just run that calculation on all of them and then add all the results together. Uh, so that's what we want to do just in Go. So how do I declare an array of numbers? Is there anything special I have to do? Declare an array of integers and go. Arrays. Tor of go. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So this, I think, is like another way of like writing variables um, so that for my understanding, it like thinks about um, rather than you like saying, I guess, that it needs to be an int or whatever, it like assumes what it should be. Um, I don't know if that'll cause any problems, so I'm just going to leave it like this for now. But it looks like this is how we declare an array. Primes. Why is there a six in there? I thought. Okay, so let's let's try to do it this way. Um, masses. Right, let's just try this. So that's just another way of declaring your variable. Same thing as doing like the var mass and thing. So we're just gonna do an array. So for my understanding, you do an array, you say what the type is. So int, so this is gonna be an array of ints. And then we do these curly braces and we can just pop in our numbers, I guess. Um, so really wish they put some commas on this thing. You know, that would have been really nice. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, I, I can't put commas on it like this. Hmm. Do I have to figure out now how to like put these in a comma? Hmm. So I don't know enough about Go to actually do this, but let's just take these values. And we'll, if this works, we can assume that the other way will work too. So we got 12, 14, 1969. And this number that I'm not going to bother reading. I mean, I can read it. Uh, let's see. Okay, 100,756. Okay, cool. So these are all our masses. Um, if this works, then at some point later, I will pop those numbers into this array and get the actual result. But I just want to get this working. Um, so just like last time, I decided to stream with low battery. Should really stop doing that. Okay. Cool. Now we won't die. All right. So we've got this array of numbers. Uh, we want to iterate over it. I cheated a little bit. I, I kind of like looked at how to iterate over things. So it works something like this. Four I so we're going in masses so we'll say mass let's get rid of this mass over here for i mass uh let's see which is in like the range of masses Let's just try to print each of the numbers first. 
and make sure that works. So fmt dot print ln um, sprint i and mass. All right. Let's uh, comment this up now. Make sure that works. Are we iterating over this array? We are, great. We're getting 12, 14, all right, awesome. So we know that i is like the index and each of the masses are getting console locked. Not console locked, print lined or wherever. This is not job, this is good. Um, let's see. All right, so now we're iterating over them. So you basically wanna do this in here. Let's see. So we'll say var result is an int, right? And leave it at that. And then for each of our masses, so you wanna, so result, can we do like result equals result plus mass divided by three minus two. And I think we need to stick this whole thing into, yeah, because we want to take the mass divided by three minus two and then add it to the result, right? Because we want the sum of all of our results. Then at the end, print format dot print ln result. I have my doubts about whether this will work. Undefined result. Ah, maybe it's a scoping thing. Let's move this outside of this. It's still undefined. Let's see. I wonder why is that undefined? Okay, I saved it. Okay, I saved it. Now there's another error. I declared a not used. Dude, we don't really need the index. If I, what if I remove this I? Okay, so that's apparently syntactically correct. Do we get an answer? Again, negative seven. I guarantee that's not the answer. Um, huh. let's console log the result at the end of everything or, you know, format dot print line the result. Let's see what happens here. What's happening? Okay. So we're getting negative. So it's for some reason setting it everything equal to zero. Huh. Let's, let's try this a different way. So let's say single result should just be that. Define single result.
Oh, let me uh, save our single result. Just copy this over. It's going to be an int. Okay. Why? Hmm? Why is it doing that? So let's just print the masses again. FMT dot print on mass. I wonder if maybe the first thing it's taking is just the index. So we need this I. So if we do this I, print I mass. Yeah, then we get everything as expected. Hmm. It's a little weird. I don't actually want to do anything with the I though. And then I get a syntax error if I don't use it. So I guess these are, the, I'm trying to picture this in the same way as like I would picture JavaScript. So I guess these would be like the arguments. So for I and mass inside of each of these masses in this range of masses, I guess. Um, so we need the I there to actually, so the second argument I guess is our um, actual mass. So we need access to the second argument. Uh, da, da, da. Hmm. Let's see. This is uh, an interesting conundrum. I mean, I could technically like just print one in the I every time and actually use the mass to do my calculations. We'll do that for now and then I'll look up to see if there's a better way of doing this later. Um, for now, oh no. Okay, so let's uncomment this now. All of this. So in theory. We should get all of our stuff. Whoa, what's going on? Right, let me not... It's printing the final result at the end. Okay, so this this can go away for now. It's gonna be uncommented. Oh. This is what happens when a JavaScript developer tries to learn a statically typed language. I don't even know what's happening here. Why is it printing like that? Uh, well, maybe I could just like do something with I just to like keep the linting or syntax correct. So let's not print this and just print the results. And we'll say, I don't know, for, do something with I. Do we have to do something with I? Can we ignore I? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. 
we're gonna all right var i holder equals int oh wait var i holder oh int and we'll just do i holder plus i okay now something's happening with i and we're just never going to use it and at some point in the future i will figure out like how to do this without needing to use i but i holder equals i holder plus i this is uh just so we stop flailing around on the stream. Okay. So we get the 226543853, which is, yeah, all that. <clears throat> Great. So I don't really need the single result thing anymore. We'll just say result equals result plus and that in theory ooh. no one cares about this anymore this can go away too and let's actually declare this no more errors okay so we get a number I just want to check if this number is correct. I'm fairly certain it is. Um, but let's take out a handy dandy calculator and uh, just confirm that my code actually did what uh, we thought it did. So easy way to do this. Let's just go back to, so we got three, three, four, two, four, one. Let's go back to when we were doing the single result stuff. Okay. Just add those together. Two plus two plus 654 plus 33583 three, yeah it worked okay so what have we concluded today i am not ready to be a go developer absolutely not um do need to figure out a better way i guess to do this for loop um I guess this isn't really working in our use case. So I'm going to look into that and maybe I'll share out a nicer way of doing this without all this like excess code that is like completely unnecessary. Um, but in theory, this function works if you were to actually put in all of these numbers. I'm guessing that they expected you to like read the this file and parse it and go through all the numbers. Um, I think for the purposes of this stream, we'll just be happy with knowing that we have a function that can do what it is they want us to do. Um, but I think I might go back and do this in JavaScript and do this nicely and neatly because that's where I, that's where I'm most comfortable with. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching me fail and flail around with Go. Um, next week, maybe I'll try Python. One of, one of, one of, one of the uh, other challenges in Python. And then next, the other week, we'll do something like real crazy and like do Java or something. Or maybe we won't do Java because I might cry if we do Java. Um, <laughs> cool thank you all for watching for hot codes this is episode five i'm doing an advent of code challenge with go um if you like this if you want to see more episodes of me just kind of struggling through things that don't particularly make sense to me yet tweet at me let me know 
my Twitter handle is like, where, where's my finger? Oh, okay. It's like right there, down there, the hot codes. Yeah. Eventually, I'll get better at making like these little gestures because I've seen like other cool YouTuber people do that. So maybe I'll get better at that someday. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Um, have a great night, morning, whatever time of day it is for all of you.